Hey guys, today I decided to remake this video. I watched the video I made last night on this issue. It was very ranty. It was probably not kind. And I decided, you know what, that's not what I'm going to become. So I just want to present my evidence and kind of counter Wizards of the Coast and how scary this policy would actually be. You have a policy. The policy is vague at best, especially regarding social media. They have banned people from joining a Facebook group. They have banned MTG headquarters from posting memes. And they banned me from my YouTube videos. Now, there's two ways. And here's the crazy part. The crazy part is when they send you something like this, there is no indication of what video it is. So it could be videos about judges who are sexual offenders, convicted, publicly displayed sexual offenders. Or it could be that I could be Jacob. Now, let me talk about the convicted sexual predators. This seems like something that they would want to investigate. This seems like something they should spend time doing. But they did not. And the reason they did not is of liability issues. Here's what I'm going to tell magic judges. In the past, when there was a leak and it was posted on the Facebook group, they went after you. You are a volunteer organization. If you had a dispute and someone was going to stab someone else and you intervened and you were the hero, you are not on insurance. You are not on liability. Wizards of the Coast has no connection to you except to tell you what to do. In compensation, they give you this little package, which I would argue is illegal. I would argue that is monetary compensation since a lot of people take these little packets of foil judges straight to the vendor and sell it. The reason that Wizard of Coast cannot give you money, cannot recognize you, cannot support you is liability. They do not want to be liable. And that creates a system where they don't have incentives to if you had a bunch of sexual offenders becoming judges, there's no incentive for Wizard of Coast to stop that because the liability does not fall on them. It can either fall on, previously fell on the judges themselves, which is a terrible model, but now it falls on the game store. That's why they wrote all this legal jargon in case you didn't understand what was going on. They were putting the liability of a background check on the game store to the best of their ability, but that creates a defense. Oh, well, you know, that judge was checked by a game store. That game store should have done more. So that's why judges who are the most important people to Magic Gathering, who give up their time, who give up their earning potential, who give up their opportunities elsewhere, are being treated incredibly poorly for the quote, love of this game. But I'm here to tell you this game does not love you back. And it will run you over an ice cream truck anytime it can for any reason. Okay, that's the one side. Why would they need to hide this fact, that this public information? Why do they need to do that? I'm not sure. Um, I think it comes down to a legal argument of liability. The more they recognize that there are sexual predators who are judges, the more it seems like they control the judge program, which they do because they set the rules and restrictions. So it's kind of like the 1099 versus the W2 argument where you have someone who is, you give them guidelines, you tell them what to do, but they're not your quote employee because, hey, I don't pay them. That is not going to fly in most cases, interns and things of that nature. There is very good case law, which I will present would indicate that judges probably can be classified as employees, if not 
employees than 1099 vendors and there is some type of relationship that is much more than just giving them a packet of judge promos which they use immediately for money so all right let's talk about the second issue the second issue may be jacob i don't know because their email is very unclear this is my response to them i don't believe i'm going to receive a reply but if i do receive a reply i will post it and let you guys know so if it's not the judge videos in January, then it might be the videos on Jacob. Jacob is someone who sits in the back of the bus or the seat behind you and pokes you with a stick. And then he keeps poking you with a stick. And then when you poke him back, he cries and he tattles and he cries to his mom and his friends. I mean, this is all documented on Facebook and it's all public. So the reason that he's making these posts is he's trying to get support. What he doesn't realize is there is consequences to his actions. What did Jacob do that I found offensive? He called He called HQ supporters all he wanted someone to show him that HQ supporters were not people were not all people who lived in their parents' basements and absolute scrubs. So he made the first poke. Unprovoked, he wasn't part of the argument, he's pretty much a nobody. And he unprovoked, provokes, you know, throws out on Twitter his epic post about how all people are just, you know, all, they're just losers and they live in their parents' basements. Well, I wanted Jacob to know that I and many of you have jobs, are working really hard, have families, have relationships, do not live in our parents' basements, or at least we're trying. Jacob is an English major. He is, I believe, from Korea and an English major. The university he goes to is rather expensive, so I calculated how much money he probably has in student loans, and obviously this is me guessing, right? But he didn't like it. So he went on Facebook, which is public, and I had screenshots of everything, and he posted to try to get me banned for no reason. He even was asked. Someone asked him, why should we get M ban MTG line? And he said, well, because I really would like you to. No logic, no argument, just emotion. I wasn't going to have it. So I did what I needed to do. And if that gets me a lifetime ban, if that is worse, if defending the audience that he's attacking, he's a little kid with the back end of school bus poking you and poking you and poking you, if that is worse than a two-time, multiple times caught on camera cheater, then fine. If that is worse than a sexual offender who is a judge who was not banned until recently, fine. If that is worse than a sex a predator who preys on women at magic tournaments, a quote group that you really want to promote, while dating the most famous magic the gathering female player in our history, fine. If that is better than a magic pro who demands you concede and you don't concede, writes a nasty article only ha to have that article backfire on him, fine. If that is better than Mike Long, who Meryl still wants in a Hall of Fame, someone who, this was before cameras, was just, he mastered the art of che cheating. Not banned. They want to send him to the Hall of Fame. Fine. But I will say this. I'm not going to go away. And there's a lot of stuff that you've been doing that is very bad from a legal perspective. And before, my ranty video was very, very ranty. And I think this video has to be better because I need to present the legal arguments why Wizards of Coast is selling a known defective product. So if the product's use is to play magic and the product is co it's breaking, it's the foils are, you can't play with a product. 
then that is selling a known defective product. And there are customer warranties and liabilities associated with that because you are the customer. Now, sometimes you can sell it at an outlet store, or but you have to tell people it's defected. Wizard Coast has not done that. So it's either this or that. The judges, not paying judges money, but yet enforcing a policy on them. Employment law. So we have warranties, liabilities, customer protection law. We have employment law. And now we have this arbitrary selective enforcement, which goes under discrimination law because they can, by having this policy in place, they can selectively enforce who to use the policy for. In this case, Jacob poked me with a stick. I poked him back. Guess who gets banned for life? And guess who gets to be a hero? That's selective enforcement. That is also not correct. So those are just some of the things I wanted to go over. And I will probably go over a lot more. But uh, stay tuned, and I hope you guys will enjoy my new, instead of like two videos a week, I'm going to try to make a quality video explaining the legal arguments of the warranties, customer warranty. I'm actually going to do research um, probably next week. Anyway, bye guys.